Damn. Thought it was going to land on seven. Well, that's what happens when you're throwing the dice and you don't really know where it's going to go. Now, in this video, how this relates to GME and AMC, well, we're going to get into that. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Khaled, aka The Bearish Bully. Now, in this video, I'm going to give you guys a quick breakdown on not exactly how to trade or where do I think it's going to go, but just a way to play it safe if you do plan on trading GME and AMC. And a little bit of a breakdown of what's been going on if you don't already know. However, if you have news, if you have internet, you already know what's going on. All right, so anyways, into the quick breakdown. Now, I haven't actually told you guys this in any of the other videos, but if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you can get all of my upcoming videos, hit the notification bell so it'll alert you when they come up, and like the video if you feel the content is good. Leave a question, leave a comment, anything in there, and I will respond to it as soon as I can. All right, so now into the video. All right, now I'm just gonna give a quick shout out to Kim from Entropy. She's actually gonna be hooking it up with some merch. So once that comes up, I'll definitely uh, put that out on the video. Uh, that should be next week sometime. So first of all, let me start off by saying not everything is as it seems. Is GME pushing up? Yes. Can it push up more? Yes. Can it come down? Yes. Is it a good time to buy? Eh, it's debatable. Now, yeah, it is spiking up higher. There's everybody that's about to jump in. A lot more people want to invest more money, but there's a lot of things that you have to understand. It does look like it's great. It does look like it's going to give you a lot of return, but there's always another side to it. Even like me, for example, right now, it looks like I'm in a casino, but I'm not. I know, crazy, right? It also looks like my beard trunk, but it didn't. It might just be a camera effect. Let me see. Uh, no. Ah, see, there it is. Yeah, so not everything is as it seems. Now, the reason why I have this in the background is because if you are going to be trading this or investing in it, really, it's not investing. It's more of a gamble because you don't know how high it can go. You don't know when it can drop. All right. So there's a few things that you need to do if you are going to consider putting your money into this. All right. Number one, invest an amount you're comfortable with just in case it doesn't go your way all right so start off with a small size you know buy 10 25 shares 50 shares uh if you if you're comfortable with 100 shares and that's fine too but just make sure that you're minimizing your risk now the safest way to trade this would be using an oco bracket order now, an OCO bracket order is one cancels the other. So basically, you set it to buy at a certain amount. You also set it to sell at a certain amount. So this way, you know that if it does go up to this level, you're going to sell it automatically. Like you don't actually have to sit there in front and monitor the screen. You just know that once it hits that level, you made your money. But it also helps you to prevent massive losses just in case it does tank right so you could set it to buy you could set it to sell high and then you can also set an additional sell just in case it goes south right so you can minimize your losses all right that's an oco bracket or now for those of you who don't really know what's going on it's simply head hedge funds getting blown out of the water now a lot of times especially one in particular which is uh, citron research what these guys do, they're actually very famous for their short positions on Tesla and their short positions and short reports on NEO. So when NEO was running up, they already have their long position. So they're making money on it going up, but now they want to make more. So what they'll do is they'll open up a, uh, a short position, right? Or a put order, meaning that they're going to capitalize on the decline. So then they'll put out a report saying why NEO shouldn't be so high. Everybody panics. Everybody starts to sell. They capitalize. Once it goes down to their levels or at least close to it, they can close out that position, make their money, buy more, uh, buy more shares, add it to their long, and then write it back up. This time, they're trying to do a short report on GameStop. 
and AMC, and they have massive short positions against GameStop and AMC. Now, the retail investors, uh, Reddit, uh, Wall Street Bets, they're tired of these guys. And they said, you know what, let's just blow these guys out of the water because they keep doing it to the retail investor where the retail investors will end up losing their money. So let's stick it to them. You know, classic David versus Goliath. And you know what, more power to them. I really think it's pretty cool. It's uh, historic. It's actually uh, a very big movement right now. But what they're doing is they're pushing up the prices. They're blowing these hedge funds out the water. So they're already, I think, at negative 20 billion now. Uh, which is awesome, so go Reddit. But it still doesn't mean something bad can't happen if you're investing. So make sure that if you are investing in it, you look up what an OCO bracket is, uh, which is what I just explained, where one cancels the other. Uh, so this way you can minimize your risk, you can maximize your gain, and hopefully everybody's going to be green. Now, one of the things I actually mentioned to uh, one of our group chats is that GME can come out with an offering. Uh, this was last Wednesday. I actually believe I put that in the group. No, it was on Tuesday. What happens is AMC ended up making the offering. When they make an offering, that means they're offering a certain amount of shares at a certain price point, which is usually a lot lower than where their current price is. And that brings the stock value down significantly. And that's what actually happened. So if those people that were buying the shares at $20 or $24 when AMC came out with the offering which was about $4 a share the uh, The stock fell so a lot of people lost a lot of money now granted They probably bought back in at the lower levels because it pushed it right back up So that hopefully everybody was able to recover, but it's still something scary now if GME does that GameStop does that It can be so much more severe. All right, so I'm not saying it will happen but it is a possibility. Now, another thing that is a possibility is a suspension. Now, if the SEC decides to suspend trading on GME, it's totally different from when the uh, circuit breakers come in and it halts trading for like five or 10 minutes. Even when those trading halts happen, you guys see that the stock will reverse or drop pretty significantly, which is like, 10 20 50 or even 100 bucks and yes granted it does get picked up right away and it does skyrocket so that's awesome so everybody's usually safe in that in that in that time but if they do a suspension of trading that means nobody's going to be able to trade for 10 days all right now in 10 days that means your money that you invested is gone well, it's not gone, but you're just not going to be able to touch it. You can't sell your shares. You can't buy more shares. You can't say, oh, you know what? I'm just going to trade Apple for today because no, all your money that you invested into GameStop or AMC is now going to be stuck there until the suspension is lifted. Another possibility is the SEC can force GameStop into making an offering. So they can tell GameStop, hey, you know what? You have to do this. Uh, you're going to go ahead and make an offering for 50 million additional shares. So they're going to add more shares just for dilution and offer it at a much lower price. And at this point, even if they did it at $20 or $25, think about the drop that can happen from its current levels. All right. Now, these are not things that I'm saying will happen. These are just things that I'm saying can happen. So an OCO bracket order would help minimize your risks. Uh, also, playing with an amount or actually, yeah, you know what? It's not trading with an amount. Playing with an amount that you're comfortable with just in case it goes the wrong way is a very smart option. So start off with a small position. I am totally for supporting the little guys. <laughs> the, the little guys. I'm one of the little guys. But I'm totally a against these firms and their shorts and their short reports and messing people like us but at the same time i just want everybody to be safe trade smart use your money wisely and don't just go ham and think you know your whole account is going to be safe because yes you can make millions but you can also lose a lot more than you have so be careful trade smart and i'll see you guys in the next one